A tenant with cancer is facing eviction even though she says she paid her rent, but the landlord says that he hasn't received the payments. Is a landlord wrong for wanting to evict somebody who faces a terminal illness? I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing in Landlord News. All right, so I have quite the interesting topic for you today, and it's going over this tenant who has terminal cancer, basically incurable cancer, and she unfortunately is facing eviction right now, okay? And the reason she's facing eviction is because landlord hasn't received the rent. Now, people out there, you know, they, they paint landlords with a bad, you know, brush all the time, just saying, hey, they're heartless, they're cruel, they don't care about the circumstances that tenants are going through. And I don't think that's the case, okay? I believe that most landlords are good people, okay? They, are, they hear that tenants have problems and they are willing to work with tenants in the grand majority of situations. The issue arises, though, when we get taken advantage of or when, hey, um, there always seems to be another problem that just keeps bouncing up for certain people, okay? I mean, it isn't our fault that the tenant is going through a rough time with their job, with their personal relationships, and et cetera, and they are unable to pay the rent, okay? We are not trying to add on to that. Only thing we want is to be able to be paid, and that way the person still has somewhere to live. So, you know, why should we make any exception for, hey, you're going through a rough time right now, and now I have to personally lose money because you're going through a rough time? I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's fair at all, okay? And, uh, you know, I, I have no problem saying that. Yeah, you know, there, there are going to be times when a landlord is going to help a tenant out, maybe give them a little bit longer to pay the rent. But it shouldn't be every single month. It shouldn't be that the landlord is just taken advantage of, okay? So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like, subscribe button, maybe leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Do you think a landlord is wrong for moving to evict the tenant who is suffering from terminal cancer, okay? And what situation, you know, like... Clarify down in the comments what exactly you mean by right or wrong. You know, if it if it comes down to a hey, the tenant only has a short while to live and uh, they're about to be evicted on top of that, you know, maybe maybe I could see some landlords making an exception. But if it comes down to well, this tenant has you know, uh, <clears throat> you know several years left of their life and I'm supposed to just eat the losses from lost rent for the next two or three years, well, you know, I'm not willing to do that, okay? Anyway, let's get into this article and see what it says. <clears throat> this article is coming from WTOL.com, and it says, West Toledo woman with cancer faces eviction despite saying she has paid her rent. And, yeah, she says she paid her rent but the landlord has not received those payments. Okay, so what did you expect was gonna happen? The landlord you know, just goes through their regular procedure and you know, there's no telling even if the landlord knows that she has cancer on top of that, okay? Unless she explicitly went out of her way to tell the landlord this and explain this is why she's paying late, if that even is a reason why she's paying late, okay? then how would the landlord know? But anyway, this article actually has a video with it. I'll play part of that video for you right now. They got it in remission, but it'll never go away. And I got that on my brain. I got, am I going to wake up when I go to bed at night because of the cancer? You know, is it going to take me or, you know, I got a lot of worries on my brain. And last week, Saltman was given notice she had three days to pay her rent. Saltman says she's paid her rent, but the landlord says it's too little too late. Saltman's caregiver says it's hard to believe. I'm flabbergasted. I, I don't know what to say, really. You know, we've been here, we've been good tenants, we haven't caused any trouble. Saltman was given a 30-day eviction notice. The place she's called home for almost two decades could soon be someone else's. It makes me mad because it's not right. I've been here over 15 years. What I'm going through and then now being evicted just makes me angry. All right, you saw the video. Let's get into the article. 
A West Toledo woman battling illness said she is being forced out of her apartment, so she reached out to WTOL 11 for help. Kathy Saltman has lived in the Valley Oak Manor apartment complex for almost 20 years, but she said the last several years have been some of the hardest. She said she was recently diagnosed with multiple myeloma, a type of bone marrow cancer. They got it in remission, but it'll never go away, Saltman said. I got that on my brain. Am I going to wake up when I go to bed at night because of the cancer? Is it going to take me? I got a lot of worries on my brain. And last week was given notice she had three days to pay her rent. Saltman said she paid it, but the landlord said it was too little, too late. So, you know, the, the question is, right, did she not pay the entire amount owed? Okay, uh, you know, like they say, oh, it's too little, too late. Has the landlord received, you know, like the entire amount that she owed, including any, you know, late fees, etc., or did she just pay a partial amount? You know what I mean? Because if she didn't pay the entire amount, the landlord might still proceed with the eviction. So, you know, I'm like I said, this this is, you know, something where if she really did have a hardship due to this illness and she's unable to pay the rent because of that, she needs to talk to the landlord and let them know, hey, I, I might be paying a little bit late or yeah, the landlord's just gonna go through their regular procedure and file the eviction, okay? Now, you know, like I said, I, I'm a small landlord, so I can have a uh, little more control over my units. But when we're talking about big landlords, they have a, just a process that they go through. They don't, you know, look, investigate every single tenant's background, medical history, you know, what's going on with their family before they file these paperwork. okay? The main thing the tenant needs to do is make sure that they handle their financial obligations. And if they're not, well, you know what they need to do? They need to move on. They need to go find somewhere they can afford. <clears throat> Saltman's caregiver, James Tobin, said it's hard to believe. I'm flabbergasted. I don't know what to say, really, Tobin said. We've been here. We've been good tenants. Haven't caused any trouble. Saltman was given a 30-day eviction notice, and the place she has called home for almost two decades could soon be someone else's. It makes me mad because it's not right, Saltman said. I've been here over 15 years. When I'm going through now and being evicted, it just makes me angry. I want to cry a lot. You know, like I said, I, I do have, I do empathize with her situation, okay? But the truth of the matter is, right, and she alludes to this fact, she didn't pay the rent, okay? She didn't pay the rent, and that is why the eviction was filed. Now, if she had paid the rent on time, as, you know, when the landlord needed it, there wouldn't have been an eviction to file in the first place. So the fact that she's paid it late and then expects, you know, the landlord to have received it and, you know, stopped everything, stopped the process. Landlord might still stop the process, but that filing might still be on her record going forward. You know, I, I don't have all the information for this story. I'm just, all I'm really saying is don't paint the landlord as a bad guy just because all of this is happening, Okay. Even if you have bad situation going on in your life, like let, let's say that I get, you know, uh, I have a heart attack tomorrow. OK, well, guess what? The mortgage company still wants the mortgage. You know, uh, my credit card company, I still got to pay my credit card bill and all my other bills and expenses. They still exist. And I don't expect any of those people or those businesses or anyone else to give me a break because of the heart attack that I had. I have to figure out a way to make those payments, right? That's part of the reason I like to have emergency reserves. You know, I followed Dave Ramsey's plan. I got six months of emergency reserves just in case for some reason I'm unable to work. On top of that, I have lots of sick leave at work and I have life insurance if I drop dead tomorrow so my wife will be able to handle the bills even if I'm gone, okay? So, you know, you have to cover yourself. You cannot depend upon the landlord's good nature 
to take care of you or the government or anyone else, okay? That's why, you know, I, I'm a strong believer in personal responsibility. And a lot of the times when I read these articles, I just don't see it, okay? Instead, they want to reach out. They want to blame the landlord as though, you know, the landlord's fault that you're going through a rough time right now. It's not, okay? It's not our fault. And unfortunately, we still have to pay our bills, so we have to collect that rent.